Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is one for the Mitsubishi L200 Owners Club who've added us on there. I would just like to say thank you to everybody. Uh, I think I've gained nearly 100 subscribers in the space of a week. Um, this one is about servicing your L200. I've got a little bit of sort of independent advice. I've just been today, my car's due at second service, uh, which I'm going to do this week. And he has just some advice for everybody, um, which I'm going to give. So... First of all, just to run through briefly, that we're talking about the L the L two hundred series five here. Um, I can't comment on the series six or the series four, so this is just for the series five. So as I'm aware, this is how the service plans go. Your first service is on its first year. I'm not sure what the mileage is. Um, is basically just an oil and filter change, and a visual check underneath. Um, it'll be probably something like. Greasing up the prop shaft, checking the brakes, all the suspension, all that kind of stuff more than likely. Resetting the service light and SQL uh, reset done. Um, and maybe the brake fluid. One other thing to note, this is a good bit of advice to everybody. Your L200 Series 5, um, if you notice the pollen filter is never on any of these um, service plans. Because they say if you go into Mitsubishi and you ask about it, they probably say it hasn't got one. That's correct, it hasn't, but they're designed to have them. And I don't know why they're not fitted. I only noticed this because um, when I was going down like dirt tracks and stuff, I noticed a lot of dirt and debris was getting into, like, not debris, like dust was getting into the car. So I did a bit of investigating, and he had directly behind the glove box is a flap that you pull off in an empty space where a pollen filter is meant to be. I'll do a bit more... Of another video on this, there's a, definitely a number, but I've noticed now if you just go onto a basic site like Euro Car Parts and put your registration number in, it will bring up that pollen filter. Back in August when I first got my car, it was a bit less known. Uh, now only like, I think they're like a tenner, something like that. Good thing is though, the dealers can't charge you a fortune making you change it every service. So that is one benefit and a thumbs up. You save, you save money here because you can do it as and when you want it. If you don't want it, you don't fit it. If you do, you do it yourself and you're not forced to have to change it all the time. So, top tip, drop your glove box. Easy, two, literally two minute job and you'll see a little black plastic flap. You don't need any tools. Put your fingers in, a little panel comes off and there'll be an empty space. Naturally, you get a filter, put it in there. Put the cover back on, make a note of it in your service book and do it within 12 months. So, there you go. That's pollen filter anyway. So, first service, that's what it would be. An oil filter change, and the rest of it, maybe brake fluid, something like that. Um, and that's that one. So I'm onto my second service now. What they recommend for your second service is a oil and filter change and a fuel filter. And that's the only part. And then obviously it'll be a brake fluid change. Um, again, pollen filter yourself. You don't have to do that through the dealers. Um, and again, grease the prop shaft, check, visual check of the brakes and... What it will be, you know, screen wash, antifreeze, checking all your, your basics. Again, service light reset, get the book stamped, SQL check done. Um, I'll go into this SQL. It's something to do with resetting the ECU level of the uh, of the oil level. In it, It's something to do with the safeguard when, obviously, when you have a failed regen on your DPF, it dumps diesel into your oil and i know these problems on mazdas and a lot of modern diesel cars you end up with big problems with engine failure so um it's just to tell the engine basically tell the car's ecu that it's had an oil change it's not a service light reset it's a bit more complex to that so don't think if you fiddle around with the dashboard or you get your mate to use his um scanner to knock the light off you will still get error codes i think like i think this i haven't actually um seen this yet but i think you might get like an oil light coming up or something like that like telling you that you've got low oil or something but it's not it just needs the sql check and i think i haven't tried my software yet but i think you need to take that into the dealer so like i said second service oil filter fuel filter and then the third surface third surface on these cars in my opinion are an absolute disgrace um what it is i'll go through it it'll be an oil and filter change again pollen filter and it'll be an air filter this time not the fuel filter so it'll be oil filter and air filter i had to change my air filter because the dealership that i bought my car from in august failed to notice 
because the like I've mentioned in my previous videos, my card being parked up from December two thousand and nineteen till August, and it was supposed to have had some kind of a PDI inspection. Yeah, when I got my car home, the thing nearly blew up because a rodent had decided to build a nest inside the air filter, so it knocked up all the air filter, and I had to go out and buy. Uh, an air filter di directly from Mitsubishi to replace it, but that really wouldn't have been due until its third service. So anyways, the third serv service on these Series 5 is a complete joke, and I think, jo I'll show you this paperwork I've been given for this price. That's not the big deal. Fair enough, oil filter, air filter. But what it is with these, they want you to do, they, want, they need to have the valve clearances checked and adjusted. Now, most modern cars now have hydraulic valve lifters and you don't need to do them. But going back, you know, even the Honda VTEC engines, the, the, the K20s, they recommended 100,000 mile, you set the valve clearances. And as we'll stick on the line of petrols here. That's not a big deal. You just whip your um, rocker cover off. You'll need a new gasket, obviously. And, you know, you have the car stone cold and you go around your... 16 valves, four cylinder ones, you know, yeah, you you've got your exhaust valves and your inlet valves and you just check the clearances with the with the gauge, job done, no problem. Again, at 100,000 mile, that's fine. But Mitsubishi, I want, and this isn't just on the um, L200, by the way, this is on the Outlander as well. I think they do a two litre diesel DID engine. There could be other ones, but this one, the 2.4, um, they need you to do the valve clearances. So, my truck now has just clicked 10,000 mile at two years old. So, next year, it'll be lucky if it has 13,000 on. Even if you get in one of these trucks being worked hard as a works vehicle, maybe it's doing 20, 30,000 mile a year, that's like 60, 70,000. Um, then you would maybe be saying 60, 70,000, check the valve clearances. No, no, no. Mitsubishi, say, regardless of mileage, at three years old, you need to check the valve clearances. So my car with 13,000 mile on, remember, diesels. So you've got to go disconnecting all of the high pressure fuel lines, taking out all four of your injectors. Remembering a diesel injector for one of these from Mitsubishi will be, in a guess, 500 pound. Argument's sake. I reckon maybe more, but it could be less. So, you know, just say 500 pound. There's two grand's worth of stuff you're messing about with. You're taking off fuel lines, and a lot of these fuel lines, the unions on them, according to the dealers, you can't reuse them. I have heard that term on Fords before. So they probably start want to charge you for four new high-pressure fuel lines, which come from the rail. You'll have to... Don't quote this here, I haven't looked properly. There's the fuel rail that runs... I think it may run on top of the rocker gasket, uh, the rocker cover, so that'll have to be removed. If it doesn't, it might just be at the side... Again, I could be incorrect. There's a load of pipes, electrical connectors. Again, when you're disturbing these injectors, you'd have to put all new injector seals in. There's various breather pipes and hoses and clips and wiring harnesses. All that has to come off to enable to get your rocker cover off to check the valve clearances. Then you've got to put it all back on again. So bear in mind, it's all these very expensive items and they don't like diesel injectors and pipes and high-pressure fuel items do not like being disturbed. And it's like the number one golden rule. If you, what is it? You know, don't fix something that's not broke. Don't touch something that you don't need to. And here we go. You know, if this car come in with 10, 13,000 mile on its third year service, we'll have to go taking all of these expensive items off. Risking, you know, just airborne dirt and dust getting into your injectors, getting into the pipes, getting into the high pressure fuel system. So... This is a bit of an issue, uh, which I'm not looking forward to for my third year service. Um, again, I run a garage, so I'm going to go into this in a minute and show you what I do. But like every, but most other people, if you don't run a garage, you have to take your car in for service. So you're paying God knows how much per hour for dealership rates, because to keep your warranty up, you have to take, supposedly, that's what they say, take it to the dealers. Um, so God only knows what price a third service is quoted at for a l200 um so anyways that's your third service and after then on your fourth i don't know i haven't looked that far ahead yet because mitsubishi come with five years so most people will take their car to mitsubishi for five years i don't know what the fourth is or the fifth i can only comment up to the third so that's that anyway so everybody just prepare yourself for your third year service so i'm going to go into this side of things how i work here like i mentioned i run a independent garage 
And I always use, if a car's under manufacturer's warranty, I always use the parts from the dealers. But like I've showed you in a previous video, nine times out of ten, the filter you get from the dealers, if you open the box up and read the filter, um, it'll be something like Bosch, Marley, Man, Hengst, something like that, Bosch, um, Denso, things like that. And to be quite honest, you can get them much cheaper. But you've got to remember, either take your car into the dealer, or take your car to someone like myself in an independent garage and wheel service it, but I will not touch a car that's under warranty unless I buy the parts from the dealers. And that way, if anything goes wrong, you've got a reference to an invoice from, say, Mitsubishi for that vehicle, with that vehicle's red on, on the date you stamped it, in the mileage, and it just keeps everything right. And, and like I've said, this is one point, I'm not going to slate dealerships here. They do charge a lot of money. But what I do get sick of sick to death of hearing, and I quite often, as you can see, I have a lot of involvement with Toyota and stuff, is when I go into showrooms, I, I do a lot of um, after sales, after kind of hours work with my a lot of my good customers. A lot of my customers are more friends than just random people off the street. And quite often when they want to spend money on a new car, you know, 10, 20, 30 grand, they'll ask me, what do you recommend? A lot of them I always send to Toyota, Mitsubishi, I like me Japanese stuff. Um, and quite often, a lot of them say, look, uh, can you just come along with us? There's a few quid in it for you, some beers, whatever. And will you come along and um, have a look at the car and buy and tell us what you think, blah, blah, blah. And I've, I've done that a lot of times with a lot of my customers. And obviously, this is all, sometimes it's in Ford, sometimes it's in Toyota, sometimes it's wherever, wherever. And... I just I don't wear nothing like this. I just go in acting as if it's this is before COVID, by the way. Uh, I just go in acting as uh, Joe Bloggs, the the family member, not a mechanic or anything like that. Or, and you know, and I either hear this in the background of listening to these people like salesmen and stuff in the background saying, or oh, I'm sitting there directly next to them, and then when they turn around and start with these service packages, and they go, "Would you like to get a service package?" and uh, Obviously, the person sitting with me goes, uh, no, I'm just going to still take it to my independent garage. And unless it's somebody I know, because there is a lot of good salesmen and a lot of good garages out there, I must admit, uh, dealerships, I have to say. Um, I deal with uh, Mitsubishi a lot as well, and that very good. Um, but I, I do get sick of hearing this with them when they go, oh, no, you can't, especially when I hear it, not with the person I'm with in the background. Oh, no, you can't take it to your independent garage. You'll invalidate your warranty, blah, blah, blah. It's a lie. Remember this, right? And I, again, I do recommend you use genuine dealer parts if your car's under warranty, but you don't have to. There's something called block exemption. That doesn't mean you can go fitting Mickey Mouse parts to your car, and you've seen my videos how much I disagree with cheap parts. But what I'm saying is, I've already showed you a video of filters in boxes, like a, a genuine Suzuki filter is a Denso filter, blah, 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 like that, is... As long as you're using type-approved, genuine, original equipment parts, as in Bosch, Man, this, that, and the other, you can take your car to an independent dealership and have it serviced as long as they're doing it to the exact specifications using the right oil and right procedure is what the dealership requests at that year and that mileage of that car. So don't ever be lied to by dealerships where they're telling you you can't go back to the, your local garage, for example, um, that you've been using for God knows how many years. Obviously, it has to be an approved garage, like, you know, like using proper parts. You can, don't just take a new car to a, a so-called backstreet garage, which I can be classed as, I suppose, and just say, do a service on this, because I have seen, unfortunately, a lot of new cars coming in, with newer cars coming in under warranty with Mickey Mouse filters on. And I'm like, what idiot of a garage are doing things like that? You know, come on. But the will. So just remember that one. And I'll get into a little bit with service plans, just quickly. Um, you work it out, these these service plans, I've explained to a lot of people. As you can see, these services sometimes, these Mitsubishis are big commercial vehicles. I'm, we'll talk about something like a little micro or a Corsa here. They're locking you into these deals where they're like £20 a month, £30 a month. So what's that? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, £240. So if it's £20 a month, they're charging you £240. And do you know what it is? Half the time when you're taking your car in, little like cars... All they're doing is an oil and filter change. Maybe, maybe an air filter. But look at these big commercial L200s. That It's only third year service. You need to change an air filter. You can do 60, 70,000 miles in three years. So half the time, you're paying £220. And all you're getting is an oil and filter change done. That's it. 
So just remember that one with these service plans. I keep telling people this. Work it out and ask them and say, what is the car due for service on its first, second and third and fourth and fifth, depending on how many years warranty it's got. And work that one out for yourself to what an independent would charge. Because basically you're getting charged 220 quid for an oil and filter change, maybe a, a, an air filter. But they don't change air filters to like third year services sometimes. So just think about that one. I'm not going to slate any particular garages, but I just get a little bit fed up at times. I do good work, hard work, and I sometimes think I just work for peanuts when I see some of these prices that the dealerships are charging. I know they've got over overheads and stuff like that, but I'm sorry to say that's not that's not your problem as a customer. You know, if you're wanting to pay all them hundreds of pounds extra for a cup of coffee and uh, a heated showroom, I know I would sooner stand outside in the cold and pay half that price if it, as long as I'm getting the same quality of work done. So anyways, I'm just going to show you these. This is this is what I do anyway. And this is what I would do for any of my customers who come in. So obviously I've gone along to my Mitsubishi dealership today because my car's, it's the 1st of March today. My car's was serviced on the 16th of March uh, 2020. So obviously I'm getting in there a bit earlier to get everything done. But this isn't a dig at my dealership, nothing like that. They are fantastic very very good place to deal with but i just want to show this because i think sometimes us independent garages get a bad name from the the dealerships call us a lot more all the time but saying like like i've just mentioned you can't go to your um local garage anymore you have to come here when you don't so i'm gonna have my say now like i've been saying so I'll turn the camera around now and show you. So my car's due with second service, and this is what I got printed off. I've obviously scribbled out the garage name and stuff like my name and stuff off here. But I'll turn the camera around, and we'll have what we've getting. So this is, as you can see, that's my car, the L two hundred. It's two thousand and nineteen, and this is for its second year service. So this is what they say that it needs. I'll just get this, lift this up out the air. Uh, shadows so there we see so at, at the top let's have a look yep yeah, so like that's a gasket fuel fill like i've mentioned brake fluid and clutch fluid the oil waste disposal oil filter another gasket another gasket another gasket and screen wash so basically like i mentioned it's oil filter oil and filter change in fuel filter bearing in mind with these l200s you must use a 530 c3 grade of oil do not if you're deciding to go to your backstreet garage, what they call what has, just make sure they're not just using a barrel of 1040 or something like that. Make sure it's proper C3 530 long life oil because you'll just end off causing damage to your engine and uh, it causes problems with the DPF for the ash content that's in it. So, all of these gaskets, yes, I'll show you anyways. We'll go down the itemized thing here. So, there we go. So, just to do an oil and filter change, and this is a good price by the way. Um, we're charging £176 labour. And all we're doing, all it involves, I'll start it from the top there, is like we say, fuel filter and oil and filter change. A few panels need to come off under the car, granted, but the oil filter is nice and accessible. Um, the fuel filter is dead easy on the on the near side in a wing. Nothing in your way. I just did a Kia Sorento the other day, and that was a nightmare. It took us over an hour. Worst One of the worst fuel filters I've done ever. Uh, so they are no bother changing the filters. And if you're wondering what all the little gaskets are, basically what it is, is you've got to check. It's it's not a change, it's a check. So you've got to check the oil level in your rear diff, your front diff, your main gearbox, and your transfer box. So all that, all them four plugs are, is simply the check plugs that you take off. You've just got to replace them with a new uh, O-ring, basically. I'll show you them, because I've got them here. And I think, obviously, the other one will be the... Hold on, how many have we got? And obviously, one of them will be the sump plug seal. I need to check that there, which it should be. Yeah, but it will be anyways. Right, so that's that. And then we're going down to the brake fluid. Naturally, you just need to crack all four of your... Uh, bleed, well, actually, the two bleed nipples on the front calipers and the two uh, wheel cylinders on the back and just bleed the new fluid through. Um, that's not a bad price, £8. Um, but So, obviously, you know, we're going down here and we're looking. So, that, so just to do that work, it's £376 just for an oil filter fuel filter and a, a check basically a visual check just cracking a nut off and you know if no oil runs out you stick your finger in and check that the level's there if it's low you top it up tiny bit of oil which will be extra charge of course um 
And that's it. Obviously, plugging in the machine, doing the resets and things like that, and doing a general check over of your car, like a safety check, I would imagine they would do. So I'm not going to pull them in that sense. But that is, so, like I've just mentioned about your third year service, can you imagine, if this is just an oil and filter and fuel filter, can you imagine what the is going to be when they've got to take all them injectors out on the third year service? I'm not looking forward to the third year service because I'm going to do this and I'll document it. Um, but I'll, I'm genuinely not happy about it. I was actually going to contact Mitsubishi directly I would, have, I would understand if the car had been used for commercial reasons, but my car will have not even done probably 13,000, 14,000 miles, and I don't warrant. I think that should be given as a customer choice, like a disclaimer or something, to do it, because if you can imagine £376 pounds for oil and, oil and filter and fuel filter change, I know the third year, and I know, by the way, the air filters for these cars are over £40. Pound. So for an oil and filter change, you know what? how much was the oil? I'm just looking on there, £71, pound for, and all that plus that, by the way, them prices, so £71 plus the VAT, what's that, about 80-odd, £85. So you've got your oil and filter change, air filter, and all that labour involved. Now, if they're charging £176 labour just to do that, you're going to be talking... Phew, I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be five or £600 for third service on one of these. So... If anybody's had it done, let us know. It might be cheaper, but I can't see if it's going to be £176 for that to be done. Oil, oil and filter and fuel filter. How you can do an oil and filter, air filter, and do all that stripping down for much less than 500 quid. it It's got to be more. So, that's going to come. Anyways, we'll worry about that uh, next year. But anyways, I'll switch the camera around and we'll have a look at what you get. So... I'm not going to show me invoice because it's got all my details on. So this is what you get. Obviously, all genuine parts. A Mitsubishi oil filter. I've got, by the way, the, a big 200 litre barrel of uh, Miller's High Performance C3 oil. So I don't need to buy the oil from them. So all I've really had to buy is the filters. Um, so there we go. Have a spy around there. There'll be a little name hidden. These one back order, by the way. I was starting to panic. They're only just getting them in. Uh, they're LFS. 710 that little symbol next to it that'll be some japanese brand like i said there never are there's no such thing as a genuine filter mitsubishi don't make filters nor does any other company but again how much have i paid for this uh what what are they charging for an oil filter let's have a look da -da -da, where's that 13 pound plus the vat so you'd be looking nearly 15 quid i just had a look today on euro car parts and i think it was only about well oh, eight pound or something for a man one, and a man filter, I'm not being funny, and you may criticise what I'm going to say here, I think a man filter, I use them all, this feels really light and thin and cheap, um, a man filter genuinely would be better quality, but you've got to use them, because, but honestly, when my car's out of warranty, I will not be using these, I'll be going to man filters, they'll be much better quality, um, as you've seen, I showed you a brand new Suzuki one the other day and it was put it on Denso. LFS will probably just be some make in, uh, in Japan or wherever they're made uh, that's, you know, suitable. Now, this one is a funny one. I'm, I'm, I could be wrong. I'm not going to just go outside and check. Um, but the I'm positive the fuel filter housing on these L200 Series 5s is made by Marley. So, naturally, the filters should be made by Marley. Um, and I know this because Euro Car Parts charge £10 for a Marley fuel filter for one of these. Um, and I, I'm positive it is. I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm sure that the fuel filter housing for these is made by Marley. So I expect it to find a Marley filter in a genuine Mitsubishi fil fuel filter. So here we go, we'll open it up. I'm quite surprised. I must admit I deal with genuine parts all the time, and it's not very often... That I pull out two moments. There's your genuine fuel filter. And always, always on a genuine filter. In fact, never mind a genuine filter. You can go and buy a cheap eBay filter. And there's no brand anywhere on this filter at all. Anywhere. The only thing I can find is a number 13. I think it is. 11, sorry. There. And. A number 24. And there is absolutely nothing 
written anywhere. And I, I've got quite good eyes. And I have searched this filter from top to bottom. And there's not a thing on it which says a brand, a number, a part number, a date stamp to even prove it's been changed. You know, that's why all these dealership uh, filters, if you look at them, they have on um, date stamps. So if there's ever an argument of has the filter been changed, you look on the date stamp and it'll that gives you the date that the filter was made. So you've got a rough indication of if it's been changed. Look at that. Just looks like it's flipping been done by Mickey Mouse, that. So, you know, um, and he has the best part of it. That was £30 plus the VAT. What will be that, £32 or something? I know they maybe all look right, but if you had a catastrophic issue with this car, I'm not sure if uh, Mr Bushy could argue the point and say you haven't fitted a genuine filter because there is absolutely no way of telling that that is a genuine filter. Strange. First time I've seen that, mind. I'm not too chuffed at that. I might as well have gone and paid £8 plus the VAT for the Marley one from Yarrow Part, and at least it'll have a brand stamped on it, which is the same brand as the housing, I believe. So, yeah, not overly pleased with that. But the only thing I'm thinking of here is there's been some issues lately. Like I've said, with these being on back order, and what tends to happen is, is when um, they can't get a hold of stuff, they'll get temporary stuff to use to fill the gaps. And the only thing I did notice was inside of this filter box, the oil filter, there's no markings if you notice. Same kind of box, but this one has got that, you see. I'm trying to read that. 22nd of February 2020. Stamp. I don't know, it may just be a quality control thing, but that tells me there's been some issues with stock or something, and I think they, that must be the make there or something, or I don't know. But I don't know, I, I've not, I'll, I'll soon find out, because I'm going to document this when I do the um, service, and we'll see which the, what the one comes out the car looks like. And again, whenever you do order service parts, or you get a garage to do it for you, there you go, you see, There's that's the ones there. So you've got your front diff, rear diff, transfer box, gear box, and some plug. Just get them, because the main thing is, is your invoice that you get from them, it's all been logged. Where if you if if you, if you get into the argument, they could argue and say, uh, I'll switch this back around. You get into the argument, if it's, oh, has it been done? Well, if it's all invoiced down, you've paid, paid for it. Who's going to buy all the sump rings and stuff like that and not check them? You've got them there takes 30 seconds, crack them off, check them, do it, you know, just make sure the garage that you take it to, do it, uh, and the best way is, is make sure that they're supplied, or they get them, so all I do is I just ring up the garage, the, the, the dealership and say, that's the reg, that's the miles, that's the edge, just send us everything that it needs, clips, housings, whatever, and that way you, you can't really go wrong, or get into any kind of conflict with the dealerships about it so yeah so there's a bit of advice i am going to follow this video on sometime this week i need to get my car um actually do the service um i might do a bit of a video underneath because i've got a drop box i've fitted the extra protection underneath uh, the tray so i've got to drop a few of them off to get the oil filter and drain the oil i'll try and put the tripod on when i'm doing the fuel filter to show what's involved um and use lot tell me and tell me do you think it's the work that i do is £176 worth of um, work because I charge £45 an hour and I think I would struggle to charge two hours to do that. Even at two hours, I think I'll be pushing me luck. I would be feeling greedy. And what's that going to be? You know, 90 quid. <laughs> I'm charging 90 and they're charging 176 That's, by the way, plus VAT, sorry. So there's £62 of VAT amongst all that to add on to it. So that's nearly £200 just in labour. You know, three hundred and three hundred and seventy six pound. If I charge somebody three hundred and seventy six pound for an oil and filter change and a fuel filter and a bit of a, you know, bleed the brake fluid through and that, they would hit the roof, which becomes annoying a bit, little bit as an independent when you get people coming in moaning on over the price of the simple things. Yet they'll go up the dealership and never blink an eyelid, 
I'll never even speak up. Like, half of them come in and complain about the prices, and I'm like, well, you've paid it for five years. You've paid it for three years. Did you not think of going in when they give you the bill for £300 for an oil filter and fuel filter change and query it? Oh, no, no. I would never get nowhere. So then you ask the same question as why are you standing arguing the point of why it's cost you, say, 30 quid for a set of wipers? Because it cost me 28 quid. I'm making two quid. And you get grief off people, you know? So it's like, it is swings and roundabouts, but I feel as if people seem to have this way of, Giving your local garage, your independent, a bit of stick about a bill that you don't feel you're happy with. But the same person a few years ago, you go into these dealerships and you get ripped off, in a sense, for these money. And no one says nothing. It's as if they're scared. Like, they just pay the money and walk out and then start complaining. Why not tell them? Wouldn't you go just say, why, why is it this much for? Why is it that? You know, they'll say overheads and everything. But you don't ask for the overheads, you know. That's my big argument with these dealership, is you take your car in for a service and you get it back and it's been fully valeted and cleaned and it's immaculate. And then you've got to ask your question is, you're taking your car in to be serviced. Now spend the extra time and go around with a pot of grease and grease the brake lines so they don't rot. If you change an item, put a bit of grease over the exposed threads so they don't grease. I would go up the extra effort and do that but not clean the car. But a lot of people forget that the time that they spend cleaning the car, would you not rather that time be spent doing a bit, few bit of preventative jobs on the car? Like if I see an area of corrosion starting underneath the car, light corrosion on a new car, I'll just get the wax oil out, brush over it, brush along, like you say, the brake pipes, the fuel pipes, all the areas that I know rust on cars, I do that. So ask yourself the question, would you rather not have a fancy sitting area with free coffee and everything and just being told to leave your car and go away for a walk or come back later for it and, it, and it's, you get it back filthy and dirty the same way you left it? At the end of the day, we're getting misunderstood here. You t- a garage is a garage. A car valeting place is a car valeting place. You know what I mean? So if you want your car washed and cleaned, you go to a valeting place. If you want your car maintained, you go to a garage. And it kind of gets on me wick a bit when people come in and start... Um, so, you know, like, you know, when I give a car back and they'll go, oh, you haven't washed my car. My well, new car got washed when we took it to Ford, for example. And I'm like, it's not my job. And, do you, you know, at least I'm, I do a job properly to my best of my abilities. Um, you know, where these, a lot of these places, they get away with literally banging the car in the lift, dropping the oil out, putting the oil back in. No preventative work's done, but you get a good, they spend an hour cleaning it for you. What would you rather have? You know, you can get a car wash for two quid. Spend two quid and get a, get a, a job done right. But anyways, that's me just going on. I've had, I'm 33. I've been in the trade since, quite, I've been around the garage since I was, you know, four or five year old helping me dad. So I know how it all works. I just let people know. I give them the best of me advice, but you know, you have to just let people get on with it if they don't want to take it. But I've shown you the best way I can here about, you know, how it all works and this is what happens if you take it to a good independent garage. You can still keep your warranty up and everything. You just don't have to go and pay all them excessive prices for labour. And if anybody here is watching and you work in a main dealer, I'm not pulling you to bits. I know a lot of lads who work at main dealers and they're very good hard workers and they do the job absolutely spot on. Not a pop at them. It's mainly a pop at the kind of sales patter that gets put about using an independent garage when you're buying a car from a dealership. In this pressure people get put under to take service plans on, um, I really don't like that. It's like it, it grates on us, because I never, I never come to anybody and say you don't have to use the dealership, but they complain to me. They go, "Oh, last year it cost us three hundred quid for a few little jobs," and I'm like, "Well, if you don't want to pay that price, you can go to an independent garage." I would never turn out to somebody if they were taking that car into Mitsubishi or somewhere like that and perfectly happy with it. I wouldn't poach work. And go, oh, don't take your car there, bring it to me. I would never do that. It's just, I'll let them complain to me first about an issue with a, a dealership. And then I'll say, well, you don't have to take your car there. So just thought I'd put that one uh, clear. So I'll be back sometime this week when I do the service on mine. I'll do a bit of a walk around um, video while I'm checking the diff fluids and like the transfer box. I'll try and do it with a fuel filter, but when I've got diesel everywhere, I'll see, again, with the oil filter, when I drop the trays underneath, I'll 
show everybody i'll show a bit of the work i've done under the car as well so thanks for watching i was just trying to do a short video but 34 minutes here we go <laughs> so thanks for watching if you like subscribe leave a comment share thank you very much bye